Um, this tweet got cycled around a bit. If AI girlfriends really do become as pervasive as online porn, what does this mean for you girls and young women who will feel the need to compete with this? We can't compete with AI girlfriends. This is the new trend. Um, I I predicted, or I made the, I suppose, I don't even consider it a prediction. It's just stating the obvious. When the AI stuff first started coming out and all these waifu generators became like open source models and stuff available, you can download like 50 gigabyte large, you know, uh, art neural networks and shit and just make whatever the fuck you want. I, uh, so I stated the obvious that a lot of people are probably going to get lost in this stuff. Um, in, in the world, it's difficult. And when you can just create whatever you want to see, uh, people will just sort of meld into that and lose themselves in it. Um, it's like a false gratification. Like, sure, you haven't really earned whatever you're working for. You don't have to draw it. You don't have to obtain it in real life. You don't have to take a photograph of it. I remember hearing a story about a guy who was a nature photographer, and he had a um, he had won an award for a photograph he had taken of a uh, fisher bird with a very long beak, like a stork or something, um, catching a fish. And uh, to, the picture that he wanted was the beak of the, the bird just touching the water, but not causing any kind of ripple effect on the water. So like literally like it looks like it's touching the water, but it hasn't yet caused any kind of surface tension. And he took hundreds of thousands of pictures of birds diving. And uh, it took him years and years to take a photo of this bird, um, how he wanted to get his, his nature photograph uh, in the, the award of it. And nowadays you can just go to a computer and say um, exactly what you want and you can get an exact picture, almost indistinguishable in some cases from, from reality. And soon, uh, very easily indistinguishable from reality. And you don't really have to work for it. And for a lot of people, I think that's good enough. I think that um, a lot of people just have this very passive, n n uh, natural position and disposition towards the world. And they don't really want to do anything or, or struggle. They never want to feel uncomfortable. So they just accept whatever they're given and uh, take little outlets like this. Um, I think a lot of people, um, especially like trannies, they have this mentality of non-competitiveness because when you when you're when you're competitive, you can always fail. You know what I mean? You can really put your heart into something and you can completely fuck it up and humiliate yourself. And then all these people will come out and say, Oh, look at him. He tried and he failed. How embarrassing is that? And it's really painful. It stings a lot to lose. So a lot of people avoid any kind of confrontation like that, which is competitive and has potential to loss. And that's why you see like a lot of people who have like a support mentality. You know what I mean? Like people, if you, there's a group of people, um, who will only play support classes and games because it's much easier to support somebody. And then if you lose, you can just blame your carry or whatever, or your, your, your damage dealers for not carrying hard enough. And the support just kind of takes like the back seat and doesn't really get yelled at enough, but they take that kind of, it, it's a, it's a sort of way to compete without being directly competitive and I think a lot of people have that and they just want to they want to occupy some niche that doesn't have any attention and you can't really fail at and you can just get by in this passive supporting role forever uh enter the AI girlfriend <laughs> um for guys who don't want to compete in the sexual marketplace but still have a natural uh law of attraction towards feeling loved, I guess. I don't know how anyone could ever be placated by something like this, but I know for a fact that people could. Uh, this guy, for instance, Ax Angelo says, the near future of whammon. What man should want to put up with an abusive, nasty, used up hoe that shrivels into a turd raisin when you can have a sexy, submissive, legal young woman that never fights you never gets old, never cheats, and is your property to do whatever you want with. Uh, oh, I should read this. 
So here we have uh, the nasty churg raisin organo flesh wham and saying, come back here. Sex robots normalize violence. Sex dolls can be raped. Virgin. Sex robots epitomize patriarchy. Threat of female independence. And then the sex robot says, Master, why is the organic female so angry? And Annan, who of course is thin and not fat and a loser at all, says, ignore her, baby. She's just jealous. Uh, he also does a comparison. Females, femoids. I, I don't know what it is. This has become like a, a weird, if I see someone refer to women as females. Oh, this isn't news. Is it? I guess I can put the hamster up. Hold up. I have to find him again. He's in my assets folder. Podcast. Here we go. Here, we'll switch it up a little bit. Somebody made this. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them down here. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna just have a, a uh, <laughs> we're having a substitute. The regular news hamster is sick. <laughs> uh, they're perfect. Okay. Uh, so this guy compares females don't stand a uh, chance now. Stay mad. So here's the the whammon. Fake hair, fake lashes, eye, fake eyes. I don't know what that means. I guess the eyes are glass. She's blind. Makeup. Doesn't cook, doesn't clean, doesn't watch clothes, nags and bitches versus sex dolls. Fake hair, fake lashes, fake eyes, makeup, doesn't cook, doesn't clean, doesn't wash clothes, but doesn't nag or bitch. And then this guy. When they start making AI dolls that can reject you, they should also make them able to feel pain so you can slap some fucking sense back into them. Uh, in regards to this, where a man is hugging a really ugly robot and says... One of the world's most famous sex robots can now can re revoke her consent. Uh, here's another one of his banger tweets to, to put this in comparison. Axe Angelo says, y'all seem to forget it's a doll. It's an, 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 onomate, an inanimate object, no different to your refrigerator. If they made them reject, feel pain, cry, and shout, then we could recreate scenes from the movies Hostel and Saw with them, and it wouldn't matter because they're not alive. I'm reminded of the um, the game Fallout 3. There's a segment where a uh, evil German scientist, of course, has created a um, virtual reality. And after being locked in with these like projections of other people's personalities, he goes crazy and starts like torturing them because that's the only thing that he can do that's like entertaining to him anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of getting that vibe. But I have a feeling that if you have like a woman that can never dissatisfy you and is just like a robot, eventually you would just go insane by having absolutely zero friction and you would just start taking an ax and like hacking them up. And you just start going through the motions, like buying new ones and hacking them up because uh, there's no there's no point. He would just go crazy. Yeah, Tranquility Lane. You would go. You would. It would be like Tranquility Lane. You would go insane. Just start torturing your your sex robot because there's she can't she can't displease you or fight against it. So you would fucking lose your mind. Bathtub full of dildos. This is him. What bathtub full of dildos? Does this man have a bathtub full of dildos? Wait, hold up. Okay, look, I'm going to open this guy's thing. I'm going to take this off. Someone has promised me that there's a picture of a bathtub full of dildos. Okay, I'm scrolling down his page real quick. Maybe he's deleted it because <laughs> this guy posts a lot about how much he hates women. I don't see a bathtub full of dildos, though. We're just going to have to take this guy's word that this guy with a sex robot also owns an entire bathtub full of dildos. I do believe it. I'm, not, I'm just going to say it. I do believe it. You know who hates women the most? Gay people. Uh, Howard Stern announced to the world that... Uh, 
Wait, here we go. Wait, no, actually, no, I found it. One second. I see the the tweet that someone was talking about. I will get back to making fun of Howard Stern in a second. Okay, here. Ax Angela says, whenever women use in display dildos, they're encouraging the idea men, and in some cases animals, are just sex, sex objects to be used and abused without consent. And that's not okay and very rapey. I think that is supposed to be a joke. Um, and then he has this literally a bathtub full of giant, enormous, weird, multicolored dildos. And um, one is literally a corn cob. I want to point that out that there is a gigantic corn cob dildo right there. Um, and then this person tried to ten eye it and it got zero matches. So this guy may theoretically, based on the information available to us, may be in possession of an enormous bathtub filled of dicks and uh, also an enormous corn cob dick that he shoves up his ass. So this is the, you know, there's something that I, uh, that I saw. I can't remember what it was. It was a post by a new user that was in the approval queue on the Kiwi farms for, because when you're brand new, there's an approval queue for your first few posts. And he made a, a, it was posting a thread, I think about porn. And he mentioned how, I can't remember what it was, but he made a, a he made some kind of point about very bright colors and how that reprograms the brain. And I really think that, I think that there is like, a, you know, that bisexual lighting that like a lot of like Twitch thoughts use, the Keffels uses it too. And like you look at the furries and all the sparkle dragons are all like super bright neon colors. And you look at this guy's bathtub and it's all full of like neon colored dicks. There is something weird with like bright neon colors that stimulates like the the erotic area of the brain. And you you can tell when someone is trying to be erotic just by like what colors they're using in a shot. I don't know if there's like a color theory for this, but it's something that I've I've learned. Yeah, the, the bisexual colors, you see that one in the background that's like a purple and, and uh, bright pink? That's called bisexual lighting. It's a very popular thing with like Twitch slots and shit. And it's just something I noticed, but there's like a very tight correlation between bright neon colors and like sex. And they use that, um, they use it a lot. They use it to make things that are innocuous sexual. It's something that I have noticed, chat. It's not schizo, it's true. You'll notice it now too that I mentioned it. Anyways, Howard Stern. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.